So often the way it goes with game development is that if you have a mystery on your hands and you want it solved, you're not going to be able to find it within the game itself. If a character is masked or behind a wall, the developer doesn't take the time to make a face behind that mask or a character behind that wall because one good reason is it takes time and effort to make that face. Other good reasons is that it eats up available resources. And then the most obvious answer, the player is never going to see it unless the developer intended it. But sometimes that logic can be thrown right out the window. And if you're lucky, you might find out something about your favorite characters that you were never intended to see. And so for today's video, I'm gonna show you 10 times in which taking the camera past a character's accessories, whether it be a mask or sunglasses, revealed an identity to the characters that the players were never meant to see. So this is gonna be ranked from my least favorite to my favorite. Let's get started. Number 10, Lego Vader. Now in Lego Star Wars, at a certain point, the events of Return of the Jedi are played out and you get to see a face of Vader just like in the movie. However, the play model for Vader has an entirely different face hidden underneath his mask. Even when the Lego pieces explode, you're never able to see this version of Vader's face. And although it's different from the face that you see when you complete the game, it still has features that are non-generic and specific to this character alone. Should also be stated that most of the masked characters in Lego Star Wars don't have a face at all, with the only exception that I can think of being Jango Fett. Okay, number nine. This is where it starts to get really good. Jet Set Radio. Now, there's lots of characters in Jet Set Radio that we could look at, but obviously the one that takes the cake is the main character of the franchise, Beat. Normally, the character Beat always has sunglasses on, and they're pretty much glued to his face entirely, so there's no way you could ever see anything beneath those sunglasses. But Beat is hiding a face underneath there, and it's a really odd one too. Opening up Beat's character in a model viewer and removing all the vertices of the sunglasses reveals that Beat has a very distinct eye, a singular. I don't know if he's in a winking state or whatever. Fact of the matter is his right eye seems to be fully designed, whereas the left eye seems to be partially drawn. Like I said, this is one of two things. Either A, he's stuck in a winking pose, or B, the art designer decided, eh, halfway through. <laughs> they made sure to cover that up entirely. All right, here's a pretty high profile character for you. Number eight, Professor E. Gad from Luigi's Mansion. Now, Professor E. Gad always has those glasses on, and those glasses are fairly opaque. Now, at certain angles, you might be able to get a hint of what his face might look like in-game, but you never get a great look at what his face should look like. That is, at least until now. Removing the glasses from E. Gad's face entirely reveals that he has two little dot eyes with lots and lots of crow's feet underneath. It's funny because most games don't go for this effort, but there is one character that looks very similar to E. Gad, who has a very similar feature as well. And that would be Mako from The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. It's hard to deny the fact that these two characters look very, very similar. It's probably intentional. And I'm very happy to say that if you were to take the camera inside of Mako's head, you would see a very, very similar trait to the eyes. But alright, not all of you like games intended for families. Some of you solely enjoy M-rated content. And so we got something here for you. Number 7, Resident Evil 7, Ethan. You probably saw what I did there. But anyways, Ethan is a special case because in the story of Resident Evil 7, you can see parts of his face, but not the whole entire face. Certainly you would never be able to point him out in a police lineup just based off of the footage they share with you in Resident Evil 7. However, the character model does have a fully modeled face. And in certain key scenes where you're not in control of Ethan, the head to his model is used. And taking the camera underneath this environment here does show you what his face looks like. But all right, let's move on to number six. We're gonna go with Dark Souls this time around and the character we're gonna focus on is Solaire. Now there are a lot of characters who you can reveal the face of in Dark Souls. Solaire seems to be a fan favorite, so I figured we can go with that. Now with Solaire here, it all checks out. His head model seems to be the same across the board, but with this special demo build, you can select Solaire as a playable character, and removing the helmet from the Solaire character can show you how the designers decided to make his actual head. And one of the features I was not expecting from Solaire is he rocks the ponytail. But yeah, like I said earlier, if you think that's bad, you should see some of the other characters from Dark Souls. I should probably make a video feature on that sometime soon. But anyways, at number five, we got Silent Hill 3, specifically Harry Mason. Harry Mason's one of those characters that remains completely off screen the entire time. And there is a pivotal moment within the game that features Harry's model, but once again, he doesn't have his face shown. However, if you were to move the camera up, you'd see that his face does exist. Unfortunately, he doesn't have his own face. It may be hard to tell in this footage here, but this is in fact the model for James Sunderland from Silent Hill 2. In fact, James isn't the only Silent Hill 2 character to make a cameo appearance in Silent Hill 3 that can only be seen through technical manipulation. And if you're interested in that, make sure you take a look at the link to the episode down below in the video description. But for now, let's move on. 
Number four, we got Breath of the Wild. This isn't going to be the only Zelda game on the list here, but the character in question is Vilia. I was very fortunate to be able to show this off in the original episode. Vilia has a situation that I would argue is somewhat similar to Silent Hill 3, where the character is shown at a certain point, but the face is not. And in fact, it's really a bit of a tease here because in this game, they show you a very, very unrevealing angle that shows there's something underneath Vilia's veil, but there is no easy way to see what Vilia's face looks like within the normal means of the game. Thankfully, with the help of schools out one way back in the day, I was able to remove the veil from the character model outright. And what you're looking at here is the character without any veil whatsoever. And then at number three, we have Infinite from Sonic Forces. Now we are extremely fortunate to have any footage of this whatsoever because the character model is not designed in a way in which you can see the face underneath. But instead, there was a cutscene from the game that cropped out Infinite's face. So in a very rare situation, the pre-rendered cutscene provides the answers rather than the in-game model. And so for a couple frames in this video, you can see right here, this is what officially Infinite's face looks like from Sonic Forces without the mask. And then speaking of disguises, we're gonna move on to number two. This one is one that was huge for me. This is probably the biggest takeaway from the Ocarina of Time episode of Boundary Break. It's Sheik. Now we all know who Sheik truly is, but the character model of Sheik is obviously completely different from who she ends up revealing to be. And in the 3DS version of Ocarina of Time, this little bit of trivia is retconned. The character model does not have a face underneath the bandages. However, in the original N64 version, I was able to turn the textures that cover up Sheik's face invisible, and underneath that is a nose and mouth, revealing an entire face for Sheik. It's particularly thrilling to see something like this in such a high profile game. And with so many people doing informational sleuths on all of our favorite games, it's really incredible to see that this squeaked by so many people for so many years. And then at number one, we have something that culminates all of that. High profile character, high profile game, and a face that no one was meant to see. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Doom Guy's face. Now in the game of Doom, you can see a hint at Doom Guy's face in the menu screen. But at no point does the game explicitly show you Doom Guy's face, which is really interesting because Doom Guy's face is incredibly detailed. As you can see, Doom Guy has brown eyes, a little bit of age around them as well, and on his right eyebrow is a scar, making for one crazy reveal when you consider the fact that it's never supposed to be shown to the player. And of course, I gotta mention this real quick, if you were a fan of this video, every single game covered on this list was eventually covered as a Boundary Break episode, which if you haven't heard, is a series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want, and we try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. So if any of your favorite games was in this list, I have links to every single one in the video description down below. And I I hope that you check out at least one of those episodes. It really helps me out. If not, hopefully I get to see you next time. We're going to be doing Borderlands 2 with Gearbox as the special guest. Yes, the company. So I hope you're excited and I hope that when it comes out, you learn something new and you get to enjoy yourself doing it. Anyways, I'm going to go lay on the hammock for a bit. You take it easy.